So to recap, I'm sitting here. Just shook Robert's head. And he's grinning from across, but he looks really, really, really uneasy. He's really uneasy about the whole entire situation. The whole situation makes him really uncomfortable. He doesn't like it. They're ripping me off part. He can tell. I can tell right away. And Robert's sitting beside me all like jumping around like he's done, you know, half a dozen lines of high quality cocaine or something. He's all just, he had leather pants on, I think. It was disgusting. I personally think a man with a bald spot on his head shouldn't be wearing leather pants. But, So, Robert says, if you were to write we to have a science fiction show. And that science fiction show is going to be about Atlantis, the ancient city of Atlantis. What, what, would, what would it be about? What, would, what kind of science fiction show would, could you make about Atlantis? Yes. So at this point, we have a deal, right? Even though I'm sitting on a coffee shop patio where I've sat for a couple of years and hung out. My, you know, domain, my spot. And, and he's come to my spot and sat beside me and picked my brain. And we've, you know, made this deal. And even though I know that under the sun and under the uh, great god Mithra of contracts, or whatever <clears throat> deity there is of contracts, that we've made this deal before. That I am, of course, going to get fucked over in here. I know this, right from the start, from the moment that I see these two yuppie fuckers come sit down beside me, I know, oh, there's something going on. These guys are gonna try and rip Chris off or something. Something's going on, right? <clears throat> so, I'm prepared. It's okay, we have a deal. Still have that clause where I can beat his head, right? In my mind, I'm just sort of, you know, Thank you. <clears throat> anyway, so I says, so Robert says, what kind of show would you make about Atlantis? What was it like? Where did it go? Did it just sink? Did everybody die? What happened? How would you make a science fiction show? Where you could keep going over and over in a series. So I start off consultation with him with the basics of the history of Atlantis, which really amounts to very little that we know as human beings, really. There's lots of speculation, especially by people that you know, believe in aliens, and pre, pre-human alien contact or whatever, those guys, they're all into that shit, whatever. Personally, my opinion from reading Plato and his account of Atlantis, his trip to Atlantis, the only other two accounts are, one is from a, a guy, I believe his name is Islepius, and I don't know how much you can take Islepius as, I think that's his name, it's something similar to like that, right? All those Greek names, you know? In my head. Anyways, some it, it, it's a nice description he makes of Atlantis, but at the same time, in the same passage, they talk about Islepius like uh, riding uh, a stick, like a broomstick, and flying into the sky. So I'm like, well, he got on a stick and he flew in the sky, and this is like uh, three, four thousand years before Christ. Like six thousand, five, six thousand years ago, I room six that flew in the sky. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe that's not quite a true account of Atlantis. Maybe could be exaggerated. Maybe right. <coughs> but we have this passage from Plato. 
Plato is very hard to hit. He's just reason. Fuck all your other stupid bullshit. Plato's about reason. He, he had these, he was actually a kind of pagan. And he had these beliefs in the spiritual uh, animal that man is within themselves and stuff, similar to the Gnostic traditions and stuff, right? But overall, in the great volume of Plato's works, Plato's straight, you know, just goes a rectangle with a square, but you know, you get the idea. <clears throat> so Plato says he goes on this trip and it takes him a, you know, three weeks by caravan around all coastline and stuff till they get to the city of Atlantis. There's a big marketplace there and everybody's doing all this trade and there, there's all these like uh, <clears throat> exotic weapons and, you know, things like really nicely made knives and things that, like, oh, how did they make a knife like this? It's really, really cool, you know? And, uh, then a big storm comes, and Plato's not on on Atlantis at this time. When he when he come, he, his his whole entire explanation of Atlantis is a paragraph, maybe two, right? But what we discern or determine from Plato telling us about Atlantis is that there was indeed a place called Atlantis. A trading port and it had these really smooth streets and it would, you had to get to it from a bridge it, there was a bridge on the mainland that went out to this little island of Atlantis and it was very small and there was a trading port on the top of it and there were boats that could moor to it and then it had uh, really amazingly uh, flat streets made of metal or, and other ones made of concrete, and other large walkways made of many inlaid mosaic tiles that were of, of a design that Plato himself um, wrote about. And we read about it all these centuries later, he's like, oh, these streets are so smooth. Mm. This technology is so cool. Hey. I mean, at that point, we're still, 2,000 years before the Stoics and their uh, mastery of machine works, which was highly advanced. But at the time, there was some Sumerians working on machine works, roughly. 6,000 years ago, there were some actual Sumerian uh, enclaves where they had machine works of a high nature and uh, forging and <laughs> forging and um, metalworking was quite advanced in the Persian. Time. So, I'm digressing because I'm trying to explain the veracity of my explanation and my thoughts. But he wasn't interested in this, Robert Cooper. He wasn't interested in the, the truth of Atlantis, which I am because I'm a historian and a philosopher and I study religions and people get really hung up on this Atlantis thing. They get really, really hung up on it. So, <laughs> so, I can see that Robert really doesn't care about the truth of Atlantis, but I can do I mean, he, I just sort of pull it back. So you're talking about a science fiction story, so you want to know what happened to it? What's the big cataclysm? <laughs> kind of special effects you make of it? Land is sinking into the sea. And this is the crux of it. <clears throat> because Atlantis didn't sink into the sea. It never did. It didn't sink. Yes, there was a big storm and they told everybody, get off the fucking top of Atlantis because everybody go down and they close down everything because the storm's coming. But in reality, Atlantis wasn't an island. Atlantis was a submarine. Yeah, that's it. 6,000 years ago, something like that. There was a giant metal submarine and a good surface, and on top of it, they could have a big marketplace on it. 
and they stayed in the same place for a very long time, for many, many, many years, more than 20, a couple decades, they stayed in the same place. Maybe they were waiting for something that they needed or getting something fabricated or something like that, right? But they did a lot of trade in one place for about 20 years. And then it submerged. It didn't sink, it submerged. And went to another place, right? And that's what really happened to Atlantis. And there's more, of course, to the story of Atlantis, but that's my speculation going past that point. Right? I'm telling you that I believe that it's Atlantis was a submarine. A very, very large and very, very, you know, maybe primitive by our standards, but it still held air and it was made out of metal and it could submerge and it could hold a couple thousand people on it and keep them alive while it kept moving, right? But Robert Cooper himself was not really interested in the history of the planet. So Robert Cooper was sitting beside me for grinning with his little Marantz cassette deck spinning around recording. What he was looking for was a story because he's a non-creative individual and he just has a lot of money and he's a little fucking weasel banker. So his banker buddy, doctor friends want to invest in a TV series and he's got no ideas. He had this one hit and he probably stole the ideas for Stargate as well, right? In, in my opinion, from my experience with him as a, as a writer dealing with a producer that doesn't pay their contractual obligation. Right? So, Armand's saying, okay, well, submerged? Submarine? Some, submarines are cool, but I mean, is that really science fiction? And I need something with science fiction, right? And, I, and again, I look at him and I'm like, yeah, sure you don't have a fucking cigarette, buddy? You know, you're picking my brain about this and you, you haven't even offered me a fucking smoke. And we're already 10 minutes into this, right? He's like, no, I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's a store down the way. You can buy me a cigar, you fucker. But anyway. So, what kind of science fiction story would you make from it last? You know, we want to keep something going over time. Well, hmm, well, you know, if you look at science fiction today, it's mostly shite, right? It's mostly military science fiction that's basically funded by Uncle Sam and gives us all the message of, uh, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, I'll suck your dick sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes Uncle Sam sir, we love Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam saves the poor, yes, yes, yes sir, you know, it's just fucking propaganda bullshit, right? But they got a lot of money, and so money, money walks, right? Bullshit talks, money walks. I guess I'm in the bullshit category. So what then? Where 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 would it go next? He says. Like, uh, when it's